Misty Maris is a trial attorney, and she joins us now live from New York. Misty, I know that you had been listening closely to these opening arguments. Uh, Jessica really laid out clearly what's at stake here and what both sides are arguing. From what you gleaned from the questioning and what we've heard from the justices, what is your take on how you think they will ultimately come down? And do you think, given that they overturned, this is the court that overturned Roe versus Wade, uh, they are open to having to hear similar cases in a state by state, state by state basis? Yeah, absolutely. Because after Dobbs, after Roe v. Wade is overturned, many, many states, including Idaho, are plunged into legal uncertainty. So here's the two sides. And I heard questioning on both fronts. I was listening very carefully for specific things. First, in Idaho, the statute only contemplates emergency medical care, which could include an abortion, if, if the woman is facing death. So it only contemplates death. So the argument is, what about if a woman would have infertility for the rest of her life if she doesn't have this abortion? What if she would have kidney failure? What if she would have other issues that are serious medical issues? It, and and the, the answer is, well, the Idaho law does not speak to that. And that's why uh, the, the Solicitor General was arguing that this is plunging the whole system into medical uncertainty. As was laid out, patients are having to leave the state. Doctors are needing to leave the state because they don't know what they can do legally. So that's one impact, which the state says the federal law would supplement and would allow doctors to act and provide the care needed when there were serious medical issues. Now on the flip side, here was the big argument, and this is what you were just speaking about, because we do have a court that overturned Roe v. Wade. And the reason they overturned is they said, these are issues for states to decide with respect to abortion. And that was a prime argument, a lot of questions on that. What does it mean for the federal government to get involved in hospitals and medical decisions and for hospitals to lose federal funding uh, be, if they don't comply with federal law. What's the spillover effect? Does that mean the federal government can say, if you give uh, gender affirming care to somebody, you lose federal funding? What does that mean? If, is it a snowball and provides the federal government too much power? So those are the two sides. And to your point, wow, when we have a court that's really looking at state autonomy, I could see the court making a determination that these are issues for the state to iron out. But I will say, Arguments were entertained on both sides, very impassioned arguments. Yeah, I mean, this, there's just so many thorny issues here, just in terms of um, whether or not the Idaho, Idaho law essentially means that uh, there is a belief that the fetus's life is more important than the pregnant woman's life. Um, also, this idea of doctors potentially leaving the state, flying patients to a different state because they're not necessarily sure whether or not they are, it is legal to perform uh, some of the procedures that they want to perform. Just in terms of the level of chaos, I mean, if the Idaho law will, ends up standing, the level of chaos that would ensue, I mean, Amy Coney Barrett just talked about this idea of who is sort of standing over the doctor's shoulders, essentially saying what you're doing is legal versus not legal. Absolutely, and that is the chaos that these states, it's this this law, this uh, this decision will directly impact Idaho and 20 other states who have very similar laws. And you hit the nail on the head. This is part of uh, the government's argument. The federal government's argument is that not only do we have these issues where this statute is only talking about death, not other necessary medical care, it's also having a destabilizing effect on the hospitals, on the medical field in Idaho. The reason being, patients need to leave. Doctors are fleeing because they have fear of losing their medical licenses and being prosecuted. And, and that could be adverse to what they're talking about, their Hippocratic oath of providing the care necessary to a patient. So absolutely, this is all in the wake of Dobbs. These are all unanswered mm -hmm. questions. And many of the state legislatures have not dealt with the minutia, the fallout. And I'm calling it minutia from a legal perspective, but from a practical perspective, it's life altering for both doctors and patients. Misty Morris, uh, so many different mm -hmm. issues to iron out there. Misty Morris, life for us there. Thank you so much. Thanks, Misty. Thank you.